SpaceX just redefined what it means to build a rocket engine. Again, we've known the mighty Raptor 3 show off its record-breaking power through over 300 tests, but now, a new titan is on the horizon. Enter Raptor 4. It's sleeker, stronger, and rumored to crank out more thrust than any engine in history. We're talking 10,000 tons of liftoff power, that's three times the Saturn V. But here's the kicker, Raptor 4 is still top secret, no official prototype, no test fire, just Elon Musk teasing what could become the beating heart of humanity's journey to Mars and beyond. So what exactly is Raptor 4? Why is it such a big deal? And when can we expect to see this beast in action? Buckle up because in today's Tech Map episode, we're breaking down everything we know and everything we think we know about SpaceX's next-gen engine that could change the future of space travel. SpaceX's Raptor engines are the powerhouse behind Starship, the massive rocket designed to take humans to Mars and beyond. And the latest beast in this family? The Raptor 3. This isn't just an engine, it's a game changer. Let's break it down. Elon Musk dropped some huge updates in May 2025 about Raptor 3. And trust me, this thing is a work of art. First off, it pumps out 280 tons of thrust at sea level. That's like 560 elephants worth of power in a single engine. Compared to Raptor 2's 230 tons, that's a 21% jump. And get this, it's 36% lighter than the original Raptor 1, weighing just 1,525 kilograms. That's less than a compact car. SpaceX fired up the first Raptor 3 back in August 2024, and by May 2025, they had at least 20 of these bad boys at their McGregor test site, meaning the company had at least more than half of the Raptor 3 engines it needed to get a booster flying. Elon says Raptor 3 is built for 1,000 flights with barely any maintenance. Imagine that, a rocket engine you can reuse like your favorite coffee mug. What makes Raptor 3 so special? It's all about simplicity. SpaceX ditched the external heat shield. Yep, no more clunky shielding to protect it during re-entry. Instead, they've got cold methane flowing through internal cooling circuits. Elon called it flaming plasma that burns off any leak safely. Plus, they're using the world's most advanced 3D metal printing to make this engine leaner and cheaper. Rumor has it, each one costs around $500,000 to build. Insane for something this powerful. With 33 Raptor 3s on Starship's Super Heavy Booster, you're looking at 9,000 tons of thrust, enough to yeet 200 tons of cargo into orbit. That's 40 tons more than before, thanks to Raptor 3's lighter design. Elon's got big plans, orbital refueling tests by the end of 2025, lunar missions, and eventually, Mars. This engine is the key to making Starship fly like a commercial airliner, land, refuel, and go again in hours. But wait, there's more. Let's talk about the future. Enter. Raptor 4. Now, this one's still a bit of a mystery, like a sci-fi sequel we're all hyped for but haven't seen yet. Elon dropped a tease in August 2024, saying a vacuum version of Raptor 3 or 4 could hit a specific impulse of 380 seconds in a few years. That's crazy efficient for deep space missions. So, what's Raptor 4 all about? while the Raptor 3 became a reality through over 300 tests. Racking up 16,000 seconds of runtime, the Raptor 4 is still just a concept, no prototype, no test firing, at least as I know. But based on what Elon's hinted, it could push thrust past 330 tons and keep slashing costs, maybe dipping below $600,000 per engine. The big focus? a vacuum-optimized version with a massive nozzle for Mars and lunar trips. Think of it as Raptor 3's cooler, more efficient sibling, designed to make Starship the ultimate interplanetary ride. On a December 2024 tweet, Elon added that with the group of Raptor 4 engines, probably 35 ones, the Starship booster is set to unleash more thrust than any rocket in history, an incredible 10,000 tons at liftoff. It is 22.5 million pound force, almost exactly three times Saturn V. Sticking with SpaceX's philosophy of the best part is no part, this fourth generation design is even more streamlined, aiming to eliminate potential weak spots entirely. 
Now, if you thought the Raptor 3 was impressive with its 350 bar combustion chamber pressure, get ready, Raptor 4 is expected to push that even higher. Pretty mind-blowing, right? And when it comes to performance, the numbers speak for themselves. The Raptor 4 is estimated to have a thrust-to-weight ratio of about 220, with 330 tons of thrust and an estimated mass of 1,500 kilograms, easily surpassing the Merlin 1D's TWR of 180 and leaving many other engines in the dust. However, as incredible as these advancements are, there are always technical trade-offs happening behind the scenes. To make the engine work better, engineers are adding cooling systems right inside the engine parts. This means every part has to do a lot more. It has to be very strong, help with the rocket's power, and also handle really hot temperatures all at the same time. That makes designing and building the engine much more complicated. Also, fixing the engine gets harder. Before, parts were joined with bolts or flanges which made it easier to take them apart and replace them if needed. Now, many parts are fully welded together to make the engine more reliable and stronger. But if something breaks, you have to cut through the welds to fix it, which takes more time and effort. Pushing the envelope on thrust and combustion chamber pressure means the engine hardware must survive in some of the harshest conditions imaginable. Elon Musk himself has said the Raptor operates right near the edge of its physical limits, with the goal of cutting Starship's cost per launch under $10 million in the future. SpaceX aims to reduce the cost of manufacturing the Raptor engine to below $1,000 per ton of thrust, a challenging goal that requires optimizing manufacturing processes and managing the supply chain efficiently. Anyway, the concept of Raptor 4 is still interesting. Raptor 4 is like that secret project in Tony Stark's lab. Still in the works, but we know it's going to be epic. Here's the catch. Raptor 4 is probably years away, maybe 2027 or 2028. Right now, SpaceX is all in on Raptor 3, getting it ready for Starship's next big flights. But when Raptor 4 does show up, it'll likely take everything we love about Raptor 3 simpler design, 3D printed parts, insane reusability, and crank it up a notch. Imagine a starship that can carry even more to Mars or zip to the moon with less fuel. That's the dream. If the Raptor 3 is rewriting the rules of rocketry, Raptor 4 would be the next big thing on the horizon. SpaceX is pushing the limits of what's possible, and we're all along for the ride to Mars. What do you think? Will Raptor 4 be the key to colonizing the Red Planet? Drop your thoughts in the comments, hit that like button, and subscribe for more space awesomeness. Like the development of the Falcon 9 rocket, SpaceX also follows an iterative process on Raptor, beginning with a simpler design and progressively adding complexity and upgrades. This approach allows for faster initial development, easier testing, and quicker identification of potential issues. It makes sense. Starting with a less complex design means engineers can produce a working engine more quickly. This allows for early testing and validation of core concepts without getting bogged down in intricate details. Simpler engines are easier to test and analyze. SpaceX can gather data on basic performance characteristics and identify areas for improvement without the added complications of advanced features. By gradually introducing new technologies and features, SpaceX minimizes the risk of encountering major problems that could delay the entire project. Each upgrade is tested and validated before moving on to the next level of complexity. Additionally, this approach also proves cost-effectiveness. Developing a simple engine first can be more cost-effective. It reduces the initial investment and allows resources to be focused on refining and improving the design based on real-world testing data. This approach reflects incremental learning, fostering a culture of continuous learning and improvement. SpaceX engineers gain valuable experience with each iteration, which informs future design decisions and leads to more efficient and reliable engines. In the case of the Raptor engine, SpaceX began with simpler prototypes to validate the use of methane fuel and a full-flow staged combustion cycle. 
As they gained experience and identified areas for improvement, they gradually introduced more advanced features such as higher chamber pressures, integrated cooling systems, and simplified manufacturing processes. Specifically, Raptor 1 was essentially SpaceX's experimental playground, the company's first major step into using methylox, a mix of methane and liquid oxygen. But why methylox? Well, most traditional rockets run on kerosene, which is kind of like diesel fuel. It gets the job done, but it's dirty. Methane, on the other hand, burns cleaner and can actually be synthesized on Mars using local resources. Think of it like swapping out gas cans for a camping stove that pulls fuel straight from the environment. Raptor 1 also played a vital role in mastering the full-flow staged combustion cycle. This cutting-edge system uses two separate pre-burners to maximize the efficiency of how fuel and oxidizer power the engine. The result? A much higher thrust-to-weight ratio and overall performance than conventional engines. The early testing phase exposed SpaceX to major challenges, combustion stability, intense pressure, and extreme temperatures. Tackling these issues required countless redesigns and a ton of testing. Thanks to the lessons learned from Raptor 1, SpaceX was able to roll out the upgraded Raptor 2. This engine took everything good about its predecessor and pushed it even further. Engineers focused on making it more powerful, more reliable, and much easier to build. By upgrading materials and streamlining the manufacturing process, Raptor 2 became more robust and required less maintenance. New advances in metal alloys and tweaks to critical components like the turbo pumps and injectors made it a game changer for both performance and reliability. All of that led to the birth of Raptor 3, the heavyweight champ of rocket engines. Imagine a semi-truck of space propulsion. Simpler, stronger, smarter. Raptor 3 shattered records with a combustion chamber pressure of 350 bar easily outclassing legendary engines like the F1, 70 bar, the RD-180, 267 bar, and the RS-25, 206 bar. It can push out an estimated 269 tons of thrust, or 593,000 pounds, and actually hits 280 tons at sea level, and an insane 306 tons in the vacuum of space. What's wild is how much cleaner and more minimal the design is. Many of the complex components in Raptor 2 have been either hidden, simplified, or outright removed in Raptor 3. A big change is the internal cooling system. It eliminates the need for a bulky heat shield, which also means they ditched over 10 tons of fire suppression equipment. Raptor 3 is also built differently. Instead of using bolts like older engines, which are like screws in IKEA furniture, it uses welded joints. Imagine superglue for rocket parts. It's much stronger and lighter, though a lot harder to take apart for repairs. That's the trade-off, peak performance at the cost of flexibility. But if you're gunning for Mars, that's exactly the kind of engine you want.